All right, cool. Is that recording? Right, we're all good. Yeah, the new team team bull Lambo is pretty sick. All right, so going into this webinar, so welcome. Obviously, this is my second exclusive trading webinar. Um, if you're in this, you know you're you're taking the next step to success. I can really say that. Um, it's an NFL Sunday and. If you're here watching this instead of NFL or even having NFL in the background, that's a win in itself. Uh, you're making a commitment to yourself. So just want to applaud you there. Um, obviously, this is powered by Team Bull. For the people that are in Team Bull, you know what the deal is. But if not, yeah, uh, you'll you'll learn a, bit, a lot about me in this webinar and how I trade. So it uh, should be valuable to anybody. So... Um, last webinar, I just kind of want to do a recap, right. And get, you know, if you didn't watch it or if you did watch it, just basically tell you what I taught in that one. And yeah, so last webinar recap, uh, we went over building a small account when trading, uh, how to, and we learned how to use large time frame supply and demand zones. We went through trading psychology, and then we also went through risk management. So um, again, I would recommend going back and watching that recording. And for the people that said they weren't in the email list before, I'll try to get that recording out to you guys as well. So um, I'll try to email that to you as well. And, you know, eventually over the years of, you know, hopefully I have over, you know, 10, 20 of these free webinars, uh, we can kind of stack them up into a free webinar course portfolio type of thing. And you can have it, you know, free of charge, right? Like I'm not charging anything totally free. And yeah, so hopefully over time, we build up a really good portfolio of these videos and, um, you know, it might be all you need to become successful in this. So uh, yeah, when I, when I talk about a small account, I consider it to be under 25,000, but um, you know, everyone's different. But again, I'll send you that video and that recording of the last webinar and hopefully you'll get some good information of that. And we're going to go through a little bit of the beginning of that webinar as well in here. So again, I've, I've, I've said this before, but you know, it's NFL Sunday. And if you're here actually listening about to me instead of the screen and TV and football, um, I wanted to provide you with something that's really valuable. So I started actually, you know, making a in-depth like type of, course structure and then i kind of just like thought about it like people are really stopping their day to watch nfl to come watch this i'm just going to get really cookie cutter and give you my exact day trading strategy i've been using for a while now um it's given provided me with great success and a lot of others with great success as well so i just wanted to really just give it straight to you and for a beginner it might be a little hard to understand but um over time uh, you can definitely get a good grasp on it. So that's kind of the way I wanted to approach this web, this webinar. Um, the ones in the future, I'm just going to keep building off of these. And, you know, hopefully we build out a really good structured, um, you know, webinars for you guys. So going back in the last webinar, we talked about supply and demand, right? Supply is where a quantity of shares yet to be, are yet to be sold. Limit orders are yet to be filled in simple terms where, stockholders want to sell, right? And then we talked about demand, basically where a quantity of shares yet to be bought, um, limits yet to be filled in simple terms where stockholders want to buy. So supply essentially is where stockholders want to sell and demand is essentially where stockholders want to buy. Super easy, super simple. If you go back to my last webinar, which I'll send to you, it, it, it goes real in depth on supply and demand. Now, just to give you a little more, you know, we might have a, people that don't know much about supply and demand. So I didn't want to start without, you know, giving you some detail on it. This is the theory of it, right? So if we look at this, the supply zone and the demand zone, the theory is price action gets pushed up, you know, sellers take place on the supply zone and then push it down, right? There's more sellers and buyers here pushing the price down. And then the same, the, the theory is the opposite for demand. Basically, there's buyers in this area. So when price hits this area, buyers step up and then push the price to the upside. Very easy to understand. Um, very simple. I, I feel like everyone probably has that. If not, you know, 
um, very easy to catch on. Everyone good with that? Yeah, so along with the supply and demand, right? Why are they significant levels? Well, institutions and smart money have previous limit orders set and ready to get filled. So when price get revisits those areas, we end up seeing a large move because you know a retail trader like me or you can't make a huge move move in the market happen. But a institution, hedge fund, or smart money that has a lot of money have big orders sitting there. They can move the the market. So um, that's a keynote of finding those supply and demand zones. So in the last webinar, this is the last uh, slide I'll show from the last webinar. Basically, I talk about the 9 EMA and the 20 EMA and the fair value gap trend strategy and then the pre-market high and low retest. So, and I also asked if you got, if we should run another webinar, which obviously we're here. Um, and a lot of people re really were interested in the 9 EMA and the 20 EMA along with the fair value gap trend strategy. So I wanted to give that exactly cookie cutter to you guys and really just show you exactly how to do it, how to find it and how to trade it. So that's that's what's going to go down right now. So this is what I like to call trading in between the, the hourly zones strategy, right? Because for me, if you guys go back in the last webinar, you'll see that I like to tra I like to trade hourly zones. So our hourly supply and demand zones. But when you trade these types of zones, you can't get setups every single day, right? Because simply the zones are higher time frame, and you might not get a setup that day and you might not get a setup that week. So therefore, I implemented a new strategy that I call in between zones, which happens to be with the pre-market highs and pre-market lows. I use five minute candle closes to confirm my levels. I use the nine and the 20 EMA um, moving averages, and then I use fair value gaps. So Along with that, I always use the same basket of stocks, SPY, QQ, Apple, Amazon, and AMD, a few other ones occasionally, but this is the exact thing that I use um, it, like basically everyday trading. Really simple and really simple and just honestly like this strategy I feel like if you have any experience trading or looking at the charts, you'll be able to, I mean, really pick up on this very quickly. So, um, moving into the next slide. All right. So we're going to just get down, we're going to break down each section, kind of learn how to use it. Um, so setting pre-market highs and lows, I mean, seems self-explanatory, but actually a lot of people have questions on this. Um, they are used as important support and resistance levels, the pre-market low and the pre-market high are. And then each day I mark them out and I never keep previous days pre-market levels. So after, you know, after Monday, when Tuesday comes around, I will not have the pre-market low and pre-market high from Monday. I only use that same day pre-market high and pre-market low. To answer your question, AJ, so depending on where we're at in between zones will give me my overall bias. And then when I trade, you know, going into that day using the pre-market highs and pre-market lows, depending on where we trend, you know, obviously if I have a bias to the downside, the higher probability will be don't, will be to the downside when it comes to trading this strategy. So it all boils down to, I use the supply and demand, but really um, it's a, you won't find setups on that every day. So I set these by using pre-market, the pre-market time, for example. So a lot of people like the only use from 8 to 9.30, which would be only like to right here on the chart. But I go from the next day. I go from the, all, the entire next morning I use as my pre-market levels. So you can see here, um, just this was just last um, the last trading day on QQQ. Um, I marked out the pre-market low and pre-market high, right? So that's how I, that's how I, formulate it and just make it super easy. I don't go from a certain time period. I go from just the next morning on. Make sense? All 
Are we good? Are we good? All right, cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so moving on to the next. We, we, we understand how to mark the pre-market highs and pre-market lows. I mean, super simple, super simple stuff. Now we're going to get into the fair value gaps. They can be a little more difficult, but once you understand them, they are very easy as well. So um, a fair value gap. These are zones created by an inefficiency in the market and usually occur on a specific zone where there is less trading activity seen and price only has the one directional movement. So fair value gaps, FV, FVGs, that's what they're usually called. Um, but fair value gaps represent zones where a lot of orders were injected for creating the inefficiency in the market. So finding new trade opportunities when paired with order blocks. So supply or demand zones because these zones are big points of interest. So basically a fair value gap is what we look for as a trader. So essentially what we look for, uh, the trader looks for is the price in the future to fill the inefficiency as there are potential resting orders to target an entry for a trade. This might sound confusing, but you'll understand it when I show you an example. So I don't use the fair value gap indicator. I, I draw them myself. So this is what essentially a fair value gap looks like. So if we see here, you know, we have an impulse move to the upside. Then we have a, a fair value gap that's formed in this green candle. And then the same thing for the downside. We have an impulse move to the downside. And then we see a fair value gap formed here. So a fair value gap is formed when the upper and lower wicks of the neighbor candles do not fully overlap its body. Hence, the fair value gap zone is an area where is an area that fills the space between the wicks, which is drawn on the body of a candle. So again, you see this wick right here. You see this wick right here. It doesn't fill the body of the candle. And where it does fill the body of the candle, we draw our fair value gap. So the key to identifying fair value gaps is the gap can only be calculated by taking the impulse move up or down the candles as well as the candles on either side of it, of it, everything else does not contribute towards the gap. So looking at this price action, right? There, there's going to be a, a lot more candles that are formed up and down around this, but only these three candles formulate this fair value gap. So this is an impulse move up, impulse move down. It's formulated of three candles. And out of those three candles, if we can find this a gap, that's called a fair value gap. It's a big move, right? An impulse move is just a bigger move to the upside or the downside. Because what you're going to notice is I use this on the five minute time frame. And that's it, right? So that's why I, I in the beginning I said we use five minute confirmation because I only use this on the five minute time frame. What you're going to see is if you look on the five minute time frame um, on the chart this week, you might think there's going to be a lot of fair value gaps that form, but typically it's not many. Right. And with the strategy that I'm showing you now, um, for everything to align, it's going to give you maybe one or two good setups every day or every few days. So we're not going to be trading every single day, but um, we'll, we're going to be getting really high quality good setups. So we all understand what a fair value gap is right now. So from this point on, we know what a fair value gap is, but I just want to come on here. We we have the chart. Now let's come, let's exit this. Let's scroll down and let's come here. All right. So I figured this is the best way to do it, right? Instead of going to my screen, we'll just go on here. Um, let's, let's find the fair value gap, right? Let's find a fair value gap and exactly where we would potentially, you know, enter off the, just the fair value gap alone. Right. So on this chart, can you guys find uh fair value gaps? Well, looking for the impulse moves, right? Impulse move up here. Well, we don't see it, we don't see a fair value gap here because this wick of this red candle came all the way up and surpassed this body of this candle, right? So that's not a fair value gap. We see another impulse move up here. Okay, boom. Impulse move up. 
wick down to here, wick here. Okay, now we have it a fair value gap right here. Okay, boom. Perfect, right? So we have a fair value gap right here. What happens? Well, we see it a continued push up, push right back down. And what's the theory of a fair value gap? Well, the theory is an inefficiency was created in the market where orders were left to be filled. Price action gets back into this zone. Orders get filled. And then we continue higher. Right? So that's an area of where we look for buyers to step in. And obviously it, it happens and we continue it, the, the trend upwards. Now let's go look further into this, right? So let's let's get rid of this. Yeah, so the incorrect, right? See, we have this impulse move up, but this candle here has a large wick to the upside, right? And it covers this next candle. So therefore, this body, that's not an inefficiency because this candle was already in it. Orders already got filled in this body. So that, that cannot count, right? And now look, okay, now people are going to say, what about this? Isn't this a fair value gap? Absolutely. That is that is technically a fair value gap. However, what happens, we see this big, big push over extension up. We come back down and I mean, it, we don't have much resistance or any any reasoning to take that. Whenever I see two or more fair value gaps, I'm always going to take the um, highest probability, which is either going to be the farthest one from it or the ones that align with the EMAs or the, or the VWAP. So again, um, we see hard, hard selling occur right up there at this 379. We have this fair value gap formulated right here. And then we see buyers push it up. Okay. So, and we can also see here, price action gets rejected. Three red candles down. There is a small fair value gap right here. It's very small. I liked it. So a lot of people say, all right, you can find so many fair value gaps. Well, I'm only going to use the ones, in my opinion, that have a good distance in between them, right? Because if they're if it's a, you know, a ten to twenty cent fair value gap, it's not giving me, uh, you know, just it's not giving me a great, you know, opportunity to even get filled on a good entry. It's like just very small. It could blow through it easily, and it's just not, in my experience, it's not worth taking. Let me get to some questions here. It says, do you? Okay, yeah, that's a really good question. So someone asked, does the does there has to be three green candles or three red candles to be a fair value gap? It does not. So do you see this? There's a green candle right here. Let me, sorry. Uh, there's a bad line. There's a, there's a green candle right here, but that starts to move to the downside. So there's one, two, and three. Right. So there is a fair value gap right here. Right. And we see as long as there's an impulse move up or down. Right. So if you're seeing in this chop here, this I'm not finding a fair value gap in this type of chop here. Right. I'm finding a fair value gap in the bigger moves. Right. In the bigger moves in the five minute time frames. So we have to identify the moves. That's that's a key process. That's a key point to the process. Right. Now, here we identify this move. Boom, to the downside, comes back up, retest this area, sellers get filled. But again, when I talk about five-minute price confirmation, what happened in not only one, but two of these areas, right? Can someone tell me what happened in these areas? Anybody, anybody? Going once, going twice. Price changed direction, but how? Right, looking at the price, looking at the specific five minute candles, what do we see on both of these fair value gaps? We see wicks. Yes, we do see wicks. Okay, I think I've seen it. I think I see. It. We see a hammer candle, a reversal candle, right? This candle coming down here, right, is a large wick to the downside. Body closes hot up and high. Um, and that's a that's a key sign of a reversal. Now we see a next candle comes out to engulfing candle and closes above that fair value gap 
gives us really good op, you know, risk to reward because say if we enter even off the close of the five-minute candle above the fair value gap, our stop loss is right below. Is a candle close below that that level and our potential, you know, profit target is high of day or or even more. So and if, and this one as well, you can come here and see boom, reversal candle, boom, five minute close out, and then nice little push down. So again, we use the price action on the five minute time frame to really good to get a good edge and entry off, you know, the fair value gaps. You got me? Okay, we got it. We got it. And we're going to break this down even more, right? I'm going to show you. I like the way I'm teaching this now. I think it's a good way to go, like, really get a good explanation and see it on the chart, right? Because I can always talk about it. But if you can't really visualize it, then how are you going to know like when you see it in the market, you know, tomorrow or this week, right? I feel like this is good, uh, you know, just easy to learn, right? Because I'm showing you and I'm talking to you about it. Does anyone feel the same way? At least that's how I learn. Um, that's definitely how I learn. Yeah, definitely. Okay, cool. So people feel the same way. That's, that's good to know. Because I would... Again, I, I thought about how how I should give this presentation. I really and I started writing it all out, and I was like, I need to show you guys and just give you the exact strategy that I do because it's NFL Sunday. You guys deserve it. So if you're here, you deserve it. So, all right, using the EMA indi indicator, right? It's the moving averages. Everyone pretty much knows about it. Um, this is the on TOS. This is the um, you know, the setting I have moving average exponential and basically you set those up and it's easy and ready to go basically the moving averages are delayed indicators but in my strategy they are used to find a good entry point within the fair value gap so that's the only reason i have them set because you'll see um later on in this presentation on how i use them and everything else You'll get a really good grip on this entire strategy. I really feel like you will. I use it on the five minute time frame, and that's all you guys need to know is that I'm I'm looking on, I'm looking with these setups all in the five minute time frame, right? I get a I get a bias from using my supply and demand, but you know if we're not close to those levels, I'm using this strategy in specific to enter and exit and find day trades. So. All right, so this is what a perfect setup looks like, right? So in a in a perfect world, we see a pre-market high, candle close and break above, fair value gap is formed. What happens? This next candle comes up, closes above again, forms this fair value gap, right? This candle ends up coming down, retest my nine e EMA, gives us a really solid entry in the fair value gap. This candle then closes above this pre-market high again. And then we see a nice impulse move to the upside. So this in my in my world is a perfect setup and a perfect scenario. Are you guys tying it together? You guys getting, you know, is this making sense? You know, getting an entry down at this EMA, EMA gives me zero drawdown and I mean, from 450.8 to my my price target was up at this four, um, was up at this 452, so over a dollar move, and so once this candle closed above, obviously I was extremely confident that this was going to work out. But man, if this next candle came down and closed red under this fair value gap, my my stop, you know, that me stopping out of my position would have been a very small stop comparable to the potential reward on this trade. So this EMA that it that it touched was the 9 EMA. The one this uh the blue the purple or blue is the VWAP. And then underneath of it is the 20 EMA.
So would you have taken? So even, and you know, I say this is a perfect setup for a lot of reasons. And one of the reasons being as well is we have this pre-market high. And again, remember I told you guys, it acts as support and resistance. Well, obviously we had a five minute candle uh, break and then close above. And then we come down and push underneath of it. And what is that showing me? Well, if this, this candle actually closed above it, it's showing me a retest of that once resistance turned to support, right? So that's another reason, that, uh, another reasoning to take that trade, right? So support, um, resistance turned support, candle closed, you know, rever a nice reversal type of candle on the five minute there to continue higher. Um, fair value gap, EMA. I mean, everything aligned here. Everything aligned. So, okay. So t taking this trade was actually, um, this trade was like a few weeks ago, but we have this push up. And then I was, after that push, I really needed this candle to close green. And this next candle, green candle to close green. And what what's the reasoning of me having that to close green. Like why, why would I need that this candles and specifically to close green? It keeps above the pre-market high, but also one other reason. Because if this actually failed, I wouldn't have any fair value gap, right? I wouldn't have any reason, I wouldn't have any fair value gap to even consider trading off of, right? So that, that showed me that buyers were still strong enough to hold that candle above that level forming this fair value gap. Now, once this next candle comes down, I, I feel confident that there's, you know, there's orders yet to be filled in this area and boom, you know, it worked perfectly. doesn't happen like that all the time, but this worked perfectly in this example. How do you get in and out your contracts? Well, I use, um, Active Trader on Thinkorswim. It's really easy, just simple buttons. I could show you here at the end um, my setup and what I, and um, exactly how I execute too. So maybe if that's beneficial for you guys, absolutely. All right, we're going to get to risk to reward here soon. I'll show you. I'll show you more about that. So again, I wanted to formulate this one of us working together and you really seeing it with your eyes because this strategy does work a lot of a lot and i see it formulate a decent amount so um you know if we could see it together and you'll be able to see it this week and see it actually happen i mean i can go back in uh the last three trading days on qqq it happened basically to a t so um i can go over that as well but looking at spy here let's let's see with the knowledge you have now let's see if you can kind of find what we're looking at and how to trade it, right? Let me go here. All right, so here we are. I'm gonna go step by step, easy on the five minute time frame. We're on spy here. Okay. Pre market high. Ooh, that's a terrible line. Pre-market high, still really bad, but you get the you get the point. And pre-market low, oh my god, Jesus! <laughs> oh, all right, you you know, I'll just I'll just start it from there. All right, there we go. Pre-market low. Now nah, the ruler, the ruler can stay away. All right, so pre-market high, pre-market low. You get the idea. All right. Can't we see an impulse move to the upside? Formulates this fair value gap right here. Right. So we see a gap right here. Boom. Okay. So pre market high break, fair value gap. This is the same example as the last one but you see the whole picture because it wasn't just a i've seen someone say it was a three to one r or whatever this push up to 452.69 <laughs> it, it, it went a lot farther <laughs> so um 
the risk to reward comparable was insane. Okay. So my stop loss here, personally, what I I do is a fail as a five minute candle close under this fair value gap is where I exit. It's going to be my stop loss. My entry was on the EMA, so it was down here, giving me very small risk comparable to obviously the reward that we had. But if you look again, if you look, if you continue to look up here, what happens? Impulse move to the upside, fair value gap, EMA re retest, continue higher. Wow, it's magic. It is magic. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you. But again, so e either way, right? Even if you want, if even if you were hesitant, you were trying to work on your discipline, you're trying to work on your execution, and maybe you are just nervous to get in down at this uh, at the bottom of this red candle on the EMA. All right, we see this candle push up and close above that pre-market high, that should give you all the confirmation you need to take the trade. And basically, your risk to reward could be if it fails this pre-market high and closes below it, then that could be, you know, your stop loss. Or, you know, there's so many different ways you can trade. And I always talk about this. Your risk to reward is dependent on your position size, right? Because, okay, say my normal position size. Let me wipe this off so you guys can get a good understanding. Let's say... My normal position size is 50 contracts, right? And I take 50 contracts right here. I'm going to follow my stop loss very, very closely, right? But say, okay, I say I have the ability to take 50 contracts, but I'm not um, very experienced, right? Or I'm not, you know, whatever the case may be. I, I want to take five and I want to wait for price action to confirm. Well, we can set it up this way, right? Okay, price action confirms with this five minute candle close that we're, we're going to reverse and continue higher or continue higher rather. Um, and basically we could set our stop loss either one, um, you know, below this candle wick or two, just the failure of that pre-market high. So there's many ways you can adjust, right? You can make your risk to reward make sense. It all boils down to uh, position size. And I don't want to go through all of that because I did that in my last webinar. So I'll send you that video if you're a complete beginner. I'll send you that one, that recording, and you'll get a really good feel for what I'm saying here. But okay, one last time just to give you a really good, uh, good C and good I on this strategy. Pre-market high, that was better. Pre-market low, okay. Going into the day, we actually re we actually test that pre-market low and can and use it as what we say. What do we use the pre-market low and pre-market high as? Support and resistance, right? Okay. So this this pre-market low acted as support. Boom, continued higher, closed above. This fair value gap was formed right here. We also see right here, EMA retest, right? That gives us a perfect entry comparable to, okay, even if, like for a person that scalps with a higher position size, like say if I'm using 100 to 200 contracts, which is like, you know, I could do that. But if, say if I was doing that, right? 200 contracts. From this point here, if I, if I filled off this EMA, and from this candle close, I would be up, you know, using zero day expiration or even next or even a weekly contract. I would be up very nice, like thousands of dollars just off this five minute candle move up here. Not even considering the continuation we got with this trade. Right. So. Again, it, the way I've structured this specific strategy is super um it's going to you're going to get a really good fill and you're going to get a really good risk to reward ratio um now one thing that i can say about this strategy is is that sometimes you'll see a move like this 
right? You see this candle actually push up, make a nice little scalp move where a lot of traders are very happy with or some are trying to catch the big move. And then we'll, we'll see it come down and fail. Now, if that's the case, you have to get out of that trade. Because one thing with a fair value gap is fair value gaps, in my opinion, don't work more than once. So after this is after this fair value gap is used, right? After buy orders already get filled here for the second time, if price action comes back down and comes into this, I am not trying for another bounce. Because in my mind, all the buy most of the buy orders got filled, sell orders will be stronger and probably will push it through. When I get in a trade, I always get out with 30, 40 cent profit. And when it does work in my favor, I end up losing a dollar. All right. So let's talk about, you know, I wasn't going to get into this, but let's just talk about it real quick, right? A lot of people would take, you know, if they took this trade, a lot of people would take, you know, profit up here. Or on this candle, right? We see we see new high a day. Why wouldn't we take all of our profit here? Trimming is a very important factor when it comes to maximizing your profits when you know when you're trading, right? You have to be able to trim properly. So depending on if you're trading five contracts, 10 contracts, 30 contracts, it's different. But for me and my sake, and this is the way I trade, people trade differently than I do, but this is what I do. On my best, on a perfect setup like this, I'm going to take 50 contracts, 40 contracts around there. When I get that new high a day break and I see this impulse move and this big push up, I'm going to trim around 60 to 70% of my, my contracts, you know, right away, probably up here somewhere. Now I'm going to hold the rest and then I'm going to put and what I usually do is I put price targets. So I'll, I'll I'll put a target here, here, wherever. I'll usually go to previous days support and resistance levels. But if I if I secure 60 to 70% of that of those 30 of those 50 contracts, I could set my I can set my stop loss at break even and I'm still making a very I still have a very great day on my hands. Right? I'm setting myself up for a win-win situation. If we continue higher, I'm just making more money. But if we don't that I still made my money for the day. That's just the way I execute. All right, so let's go to the next one, right? All right, here we are. Pre-market high. Pre-market low, set. Okay, get the pre-market high and pre-market low set, right? Really satisfied answer, bro. No problem, man. No problem. Like I said, I, I'm doing these free webinars to to actually make a difference rather than just give you some give you some information everyone can spew out and look smart. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not. I'm telling you my exact. Like I'm not. I I'm giving you exactly what I do, and I, I'm not involving any other, you know, fluff. So, yeah, I'm just showing you exactly what I do, and that's it. So anyways, pre-market high, pre-market low, push up. Okay. We push up. This fair value gap is formed. And if we look here, we see this candle right here. Right? We see this candle right here. And it has a nice little wick down. So therefore, the, the fair value gap actually starts right there. And it would look like this. Boom. That's the fair value gap right there. Boom. So, okay. We got the pre-market high break. Fair value gap formed, right? Candle closed above the above this pre-market high. So we're looking strong. We have this impulse move to the upside. Boom. Retracement down. What happens? Entry of the fair value gap. Retest nine EMA. Uh, would you look at that? Just... Buyers 
buy orders are there. They get filled and push it up all day long, right? Fill was 449.2. I mean, it went up over 451, right? Our stop loss is under this pre under this fair value gap or under this pre market low, or I mean high. So any a five minute close under that level, and I mean look at that, boom, just continued up all day. Not that it's going to happen like that every time, but I mean that th these are the type of entries you get, right? You get a perfect entry on you know what could be a trend, you know the trend of the day. I personally don't use volume that much. But, all right, I want to specify this. This is the strategy that I found works for me. But if you can use one part or one simple thing that you find in this helpful and piece it together with anything else you've learned to formulate your own strategy, that's what I want you to use, right? It's just like sports. You can't copy everyone's technique, right? But you, but you can formulate a different technique that works for you and maybe that's better than them. So you just need to figure out what's going to work for you and that's all it takes, right? So I don't really use volume that much, but if, if you use it in your trading, absolutely stick with it. Yeah, strategy and system are the same, but I would say my system also, you have to factor in, you know, your risk to reward, your, your, uh, your position size and, you know, all of that stuff. Strategy is more based on, you know, what exactly you're looking at the chart with. All right, let's, so any, any questions on that? Basically, let me see here. Come over here. Do you feel like you got a good grip on that strategy? Was it too fast? Was it too fast? So the thing is, you can go back and rewatch this at any point in time, because what, what's going to happen is I'm going to be able to, you know, I'm going to give you this recording. Um, But it would have been a lot longer. But then I realized we had NFL. And then I also realized, um, why would I dish something out that I don't, you know, if I was watching, I wouldn't want to hear a bunch of extra shit either. I would, <laughs> I would just want the strategy that works. You know what I mean? So um, one other thing is, I have something for you guys. If you're interested, I'm going to put it in the chat right here. Um, Team Bulls, you know, since you're here on NFL Sunday, if you're interested, use code FOCUS. And I'm going to, before you go, don't go yet. Here's the link right here. Use that link right there. And for the first 20 people, use code FOCUS. You get 50% off the first month. 99 bucks. So if, you, if you're interested, use code caps focus and use that link that I'm sending in the chat unless it's not going to work and be a part of team bull because I do these webinars for the everyone that's in here that I'm assuming a lot of people in here are part of team bull I do webinars every single week I do my I do my best to really like you know give each you know the team bull members what they want and answer their questions I mean um it, it's a great community probably the best one in the world honestly I don't think there's any better but I'm biased. Again, if you're interested, click that link that I'm sending in here and use code FOCUS in the monthly. There's only 20 slots available. Come join us. Come get ready for the week, man. This is going to be a great week. Um, I will be traveling for half the week though, so I won't be as active, but um, yeah, so the guest speaker was Jay Dunn, but he, his uh, grandmom came in town. He has some per personal things he's going on, which no big deal. I, I'm planning on doing these webinars every single week and, or not every single week, Um, you know, consistently. This is the second out of, you know, many in the future. So um, I don't see many people that are doing stuff like this either. So again, I'll, I'll sit here and chat, answer your questions, but definitely come join us if you're not already. This is, I mean, we don't really run many sales, but 50% off the, the first month on focus is pretty great. The code only works for the monthly. The code only works for the monthly. Uh, 
Um, and if you stick around too, I'll go to my charts and we'll just go look through the chart really quick on QQQ um, just to see how it's worked in the last few weeks. But again, code focus. Uh, I mean, I'm assuming they're probably filled by now, but if not, there's 20 slots left. I would go do it that ASAP or there's 20 slots. I don't have the permission to see if the spots are filled or not, but go use that link. And um, once it's done, it won't work anymore. So code focus and, you know, get, get, get yourself in. It won't hurt to try, of course. Like I, I really do. I mean, you. There's a lot of people that are in Team Bull from this. Um, I mean, a lot of people found success. Some there's, and I seen someone earlier say, you know, Team Bull wasn't for me. I don't really use. Uh, I don't really trade options that much, and whatever. And hey, that's perfectly fine. We don't, you know, <laughs> no big deal. He's still in here learning. That's awesome. You know. So uh, I'm going to give it like, you know, a little bit here. Going to keep sending this link if you're interested, code focus. But then I'm going to go into these charts really quick and we're going to look at QQQ. Code focus. I do have a YouTube. I also have uh, Twitter and all that good stuff. If you go to my Instagram and you click my, you know, my link in bio, you'll see it. Post it here. Yeah, I can post my socials and stuff here. Um, yeah, so code focus, 50% off the month. It's only the monthly subscription, though. Do you guys do um and I, if anyone's new or doesn't know anything about uh doesn't know anything about um team bull, definitely you can ask me questions and I'll answer them. Yeah, you know, Team Bull is expensive, right? We don't we don't take it lightly. We had our our prices were down once before, but what we notice is we get a quality of people, right? The the quality of people that are willing to spend a decent more amount. We don't deal anyone that's in Team Bull knows we don't deal with any BS. It's strict it, it's strictly business when we go in there and we and we, you know, it's not we don't deal with much. It's it's very focused. And we also bring in like next I think next week we have Jared Tendler the uh, author of Mental Game of Trading coming in and doing a QA and a with just the Team Bull team, right? We've also had Anna Cooling, the the author of um, Volume Price Analysis, one of the greatest trading books ever. She comes in almost every few months and does a webinar for us. Like th there's no other place that does that. And we also have um, Umar that comes in and does Q&As for us. I mean, I we have the top tier of, we're trying to build the best education possible in a, in a single group. So nearly two years with team bull cannot say enough how wonderful it is. That's awesome. Mike, we appreciate you, bro. We live trade every single morning. Uh, me and other, the other admins, we make sure we do our, you know, webinars and keep up with the education. And I mean, we bring in special guests. We try, you know, we try to mix it up and get the best education as possible for people. So again, for the last time, I know I'm beating around it, but focus all caps on the monthly. Use this link. There you go. Give us a try. It's a 50% off the, the first month. If you don't like it, you can't, you can't tell after the first month, you know? Trust me, it, it's worth worth the try and worth it for sure. And, you know, honestly, I've never given out my exact strategy like that before. Um, Kind of just, you don't, it, not a lot of people will just go just tell you it. A lot of people get me, will make up uh, a seven hour video about it and then you'll get lost in it. So I'll give you straightforward, but let's go, um, Let's go over to the um, QQQ chart really quick just to show you some other things. And I'm going to show you how I execute. I'm going to answer some questions and we'll get out of here. You guys enjoy your night. 
Um, again, code focus, just keep, you know, here's the link. I'm going to keep sending it just so people have it. Um, let's go here. Where I gotta go? Where I gotta go? Um, new share, boom, screen two, bang. All right. Can you guys see my chart? Perfect, perfect, perfect. So, we see here, pre-market high set, pre-market low. And I want to stress this, right? I showed you perfect examples. It's not going to be, be perfect every time. I mean, that's that's like anything with trading. It's not going to be perfect every time, right? So, um, but, okay, boom. We have this large move up. Large, large move up, but it is technically a fair value gap. So boom, we formulate a fair value gap. But what do I do here? According to my rules, I only use it once, right? I'm only using it once, right? Price action then pushes down. We do close above the pre-market high, but what do we notice? Well, we hold the EMAs. And and the VWAP, and then we start to push push higher. So once I started to see us respect that in the in the fair value gap, I took my entry. Now there, I knew this question was going to come up, and it's a great question. If you don't have it, well, let me ask: What do you think the question will be about this trade? Because it, it's definitely there. It, there definitely is a concerning question. Risk to reward, exactly right, because the, how big the fair value gap, the fair value gap is, right? It and and to be honest, it's not low risk to reward at all, and the reason being is because it's the way how you execute it. Now, I mean, to to enter here at this three seventy three point four and get a move up to, you know, even even just this 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 next candle push up to get a move to three seventy four point six, I mean. That's over a dollar. That's over a dollar move using you know zero day expiration contracts. That is huge, right? That 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 is a lot of percentage, right? So that it's not you know that's not the the low risk to reward basis would be off of how do I structure my my risk, right? If because if your risk was a candle close below the fair value gap, that would be terrible risk to reward, right? So, um, we have to we have to go with a previous low, in my opinion. So I use this previous five minute candle low. If we end up breaking that low, I am out underneath of that five minute low. Boom, simple as that. Got me? Again, Someone asked for a link. There it is. Code focus. I think, let me see. I might be able to check and see who. Yeah, we only have two slots left. I have, I'm looking at it now. We have two slots left. If someone was concerned or wanted to try it, two slots left. Code focus, baby. For the first month. And if you don't like it after the first month, you can... Cancel at any time. You're not locked in for, you know, well, you get it for 50% off for a month. So code focus. All right. Um, let's go look at the previous day. Let's see what happened the previous day. Why are we so zoomed in? All right. All right. Here's the previous day. Um, Pre-market high was very much, uh, was very high. So didn't really come into play. Um, yeah. I don't see anything much here you know the pre-market high pre-market low nothing really set up we did see a um we did see the pre-market low get broken here i don't know why this is set here um but yeah the, nothing that happened that day uh what do we have here okay okay so this day on qqq let's set out I don't, and also just to um, explain to you guys, I don't use, um, wow, I just had the word in my head, misprints. See this candle? I consider this as a misprint because of how high it is and what and what what time it's at. Usually a misprint happens around eight o'clock. 
So I will not put my pre-market high there, but I will put my pre-market right here, right there, which price came up. What did it do? Act as resistance. It's not, it's not rocket science, right? It's just common stuff, easy stuff. Boom. All right. So we have the pre-market high and pre-market low set. Price action pushes down. Obviously, we had probably some type of news or something that happened that day. Big push down. We have this large gap, right? So we have a very large gap here. Large, large, large gap. So obviously, what do we have to do? We have to use our pre-market lows, our EMAs to really find a uh, conviction in a trade. So boom, we come here, right? We have the fair value gap break of the pre-market low. All right, we're continuing down. We have pushed back up into the fair value fair value gap. And what do we have? Oh my God, it's it's magic that it, this works. EMA retest. You know, stop loss can be above that pre-market low. And we see a nice continuation down. So from the entry, 375, 375.6 all the way down to 372.8, right? With a really fair stop loss, right? Candle close above that, that pre-market low, you'd be out. And, and this is just me going back in days time. I might even going back into the days where, where I'm sure, like I'm going back into the days time of where I could see live price action. Actually, you can draw a fib. And we, me and Brandon go through that on my YouTube channel about it. If you want to go check that out, um, it's GD Investments on YouTube. Me and Brandon go through a really good strategy using this and pre-market uh, and the uh, Fibonacci's. Let's see. Come on, there's one more code focus left. Y'all got to, someone got to come make that step it's 50 percent off the first month come on one more code focus one more come trade live with us this week if you don't like it you can always cancel yeah no problem i appreciate you guys joining so much i mean i i hope you guys gained a lot of value out of this i don't want to take up too much of your time but i also want to say this is the second uh, webinar out of many we're gonna we're gonna continue with these and um you know it's just one of those things where i think uh by the end of you know one or two years i think we'll have a i don't know maybe a portfolio of these videos maybe like 15 to 20 and you'll basically know every single do every single thing i do and you know as far as strategy goes um so yeah, if you guys can run up the chat really quick, get the chat hype. I appreciate you guys for joining. It shows so much that you want to get better at trading if you're here on an NFL Sunday. I appreciate it. You're all the best. Until webinar part three. That one's going to be even better. Let's get it. You guys are fire. Let's go. All right. So one other thing is if you guys are on any of my social medias, um, there's still one more focus available or one, if you're just, if after this video or after this ends, if you want to join it with, with that code, you have to go to my link in bio on my Instagram uh, or Twitter and you can join and you can use that code. But if not, yeah. So Thank you guys so much. I can't wait to see all of your faces in Team Bowl tomorrow morning. And God bless. Have a great one. Peace.